Welcome into a post-game edition of Duval Daily. Your Jacksonville Jaguars have earned a 28-23 preseason week one road victory over the Dallas Cowboys. We're going to get into some instant analysis here. The game has just ended. Excited to get into this one. A really fun start for your Jacksonville Jaguars. Looking at some players who did not suit up for the Jags. Foyer didn't suit up due to precaution. Uh, the Jaguars and the coaching staff and Foyer decided just to let him sit this one out due to a precaution. Not sure what the injury was. We'll find out more about that. But very precautionary. Nothing serious with Foyer Lucan going on. No Tyson Campbell with the concussion protocol. No Samus Reyes with the concussion protocol. Daryl Williams and Ross Matisic both got hurt in this one. Matisic had the shoulder, the Jaguars' long snapper. He was unable to return, although he was questionable. Daryl Williams did return to the game after walking off. He was able to come back in and continue to get some reps for the Jaguars on the offensive line. I definitely think you may have seen a field goal attempt or two if Ross Matisic was available. Nothing is wrong with Brandon McManus, the Jaguars' new place kicker. He was drilling some long kicks in the pregame warm-ups, so nothing to worry about there. It was really more about the long snapper situation. You don't really prepare for your long snapper going down to injury very often. So uh, one of those things where you don't really necessarily have an emergency situation for the long snapper very often. And Josh Peterson was the backup long snapper. You saw him come in on the uh, on, on the Logan Cook punt, have an errant snap, and Logan Cook had to snatch it out of the air. Thankfully for the Jaguars and, and for Logan Cook in that special teams unit, Cook is a very tall, very athletic punter. So he was able to snag that and make the most out of it. Um, obviously, we're going to have to make sure that Ross Matisic is healthy moving forward. He is a player the Jaguars really like, really value as their long snapper. He's been around for a few years now. Um, too many penalties overall for the Jaguars, in my opinion. You can live with some of the incidental ones during plays, uh, but pre-snap, you cannot have those pre-snap penalties, um, as many as the Jaguars had today. Overall, though, looking at this performance, again, a 28-23 victory. But overall, some of the catches, some of the play designs offensively, and you love the pressure defensively that they were able to apply. The first and second team defense were really getting after it, and then you saw Nathan Rourke come in with the third string offense. He was unbelievable. We'll talk about that. And the opportunistic playmaking on special teams as well. It was a very encouraging start for the Jaguars. You don't really care necessarily whether you get wins in the preseason. It's not a big deal whether you get the win or the loss. But you do like to see the team close out the game strong. Uh, Despite some mental errors, despite some unforced errors, they were able to close out the game, get the victory. All three quarterbacks were able to lead scoring drives. We'll start with the offense on the offensive side of the ball, run through it here, then get to defense, and then get to special teams. Um, Trevor Lawrence throws a pick on his second throw of the game. It was a bad decision rolling out to his left. There was bad spacing on the play, too. Looked like Calvin Ridley may have been in the wrong place. Uh, obviously, you don't want two receivers that close to each other on, on routes. That's just not the way the way uh, route concepts work in the NFL. Um, outside of that interception, though, he was literally perfect. Five of six on the day. Very good performance by him. Um, was able to find Christian Kirk for the touchdown. Was able to then find Zay Jones in the back of the end zone for the two-point conversion on both of those plays. He had very good protection. He also was able to hang in there in the pocket, stay patient, and and wait for something to to present itself. And and he was able to capitalize in a big way on both of those plays. Good stuff from Trevor Lawrence. You saw ETN. He was looking explosive. He was looking shifty, very fast um, in the open field. Was clearly looking like a, a really solid running back. And then obviously Tank Bigsby got in a little bit later. We'll talk about him too. Uh, Trevor Lawrence was able to hit Calvin Ridley multiple times um, early on in this game. So it's good to see that connection um, continuing from the practice field to the game field, even if it is just preseason. And you, you got to remember the Jaguars starters, they were going up against the Cowboys backups. So you have to temper what you saw a little bit. But again, It is the preseason. They did what they were supposed to do outside of the interception, of course, which I think you can put on Trevor Lawrence and you can put on the receiver spacing, just a little bit of a a jumbled play there for the Jaguars. Um, Looking at some of the draft picks, Britton Strange, he got his first catch on a screen pass. Then he had another grab down the field for a first down. He was able to pile drive a defender. 
uh, into next week on, a, on that long Tank Bigsby run, the 34-yard run by Tank Bigsby. And, and speaking of Tank Bigsby, it took him a little while to get going. I think the Cowboys were really stout in the run defense early on, but then um, he was able to start getting it going, getting into some open grass, and he looked really good overall. Had a very nice day for the Jaguars. Again, picked up that 34-yard run uh, on the right side of the field. There was an unbelievable catch by Seth Williams in a crowd to get a first down. Then he made another grab on a third down really good performance by the receiver Seth Williams out of Auburn second year receiver for the Jaguars Jacob Harris who the Jaguars signed this offseason former fourth round pick by the Rams out of UCF really big athletic receiver uh, really great catch on a deep ball from CJ Beathard wasn't quite able to get into the end zone but got got the team down to the goal line and then um, CJ Beathard was able to take care of the rest getting it into the uh, end zone in the red zone there went for two couldn't quite get it good defense on a throw to Parker Washington on the left side there. Um, C.J. Beathard, he was trying to hit Kevin Austin two plays in a row, couldn't get him, then also tried to hit him on a fourth and nine. Austin dropped the ball, so a very uh, discouraging performance overall by Kevin Austin. You saw a lot of receivers making plays for the Jaguars. Kevin Austin was not one of them, despite having a solid camp so far, being a guy that Doug Peterson, Press Taylor, and Trevor Lawrence have all singled out as someone who has greatly improved in year two, the undrafted free agent out of Notre Dame in 2022 was not able to make an impact for the Jaguars today or I shouldn't I should say not able to make a positive impact for the Jaguars today and the book on him last year couldn't catch the ball very well you saw that again today unfortunately hopefully he'll be able to rebound moving forward Um, first and second team offensive line did a very good job overall I think that's encouraging because even though they weren't going against starters the Cowboys they have uh, quality depth within their pass rush so they were going up against some Some good defensive linemen there and getting the job done for the most part. You saw Dearness Johnson get in there. He was strong in my opinion. You saw Cooper Hodges out there blocking blocking for him on his long run that picked up a first down. I think Dearness Johnson looked really good. He made a grab that was called back to down the field. Pretty nice catch by Dearness Johnson uh, for a running back there. And Talking about Cooper Hodges, he looked really good uh, on the first watch. We'll go back and watch everything and break this down a little bit more in depth. But I thought Cooper Hodges, the rookie out of Appalachian State, the Baker County kid looked very good. And then Nathan Rourke, absolute magic. Made some really nice plays with his legs, which I expected. He's been able to do that throughout training camp. But what I didn't expect was, was the magic with his arm. He threw some unbelievable passes. He was able to do it off-platform, odd-arm angles. He was able to do it evading pressure. He just looked so good. He was clutch. He was making big plays. That final touchdown throw was unbelievable. He was able to break a few tackles, escape, and while he was being tackled to the ground, deliver a nice throw. Um, He was so damn good. I mean, he looked like a combination of Patrick Mahomes and maybe Eli Manning evading those tackles out there in the Super Bowl, right? Um, I think everybody can remember that moment. Um, It doesn't get better than that. And then the game-winning run, game-sealing run, I should say, on third and six, he was able to pick up a first down to effectively end the game. Uh, Again, a 28-23 victory for the Jaguars. Could there be a quarterback competition brewing? We'll see. Personally, I would be surprised the Jaguars really like what they have in C.J. Beathard. But what wouldn't surprise me is if Nathan Rourke is able to continue this type of play throughout the preseason and prove that he's a gamer, a guy that can absolutely make plays with his with his arm and legs, could you keep three? I think there's potential for that. I think Doug Peterson has done that before in the past. If you have three quarterbacks you really like, um, and the fact that you're now able to activate a third quarterback without occupying one of the active game day roster spots maybe you could keep three here with with Trevor Lawrence, C.J. Beathard, and Nathan Rourke. We'll see how it plays out. He was much better today, Nathan Rourke was, than he has been in practice from a passing standpoint. If he's able to continue that type of performance, it's going to be hard to uh, to cut him loose and then try to stash him on the practice squad. We'll see how it goes. Oliver Martin was able to catch a two-pointer. Good for him, obviously. You like to see that for him. Um, all three quarterbacks, as I mentioned, led scoring drives. I think you were able to see sustained offense throughout the game, which is not something you're really used to from 
from the Jaguars. But with a Doug Peterson coach team, I think you can start to expect better offense, not only from the first team, but second and third team as well. Elijah Cook's one of my guys. He had two catches on two targets for 42 yards. Looked really good doing it. Jare Jenkins had a really good day as well, catching some passes down the field. I thought Snoop Connor was looking pretty good running hard. And then obviously you had the fumble where he never got control of it late in the game. That put the game in jeopardy a little bit for the Jaguars, uh, but they were able to hold on and win this game 28 to 23 looking at the defensive side of the ball for the Jags early on Devin Lloyd was making a bunch of plays both in pursuit and in coverage he looked really strong he looked like a man possessed out there I think you're going to see a strong sophomore campaign from Devin Lloyd he's disappointed in what happened last year after he sustained the injury in training camp was not able to get all the reps that you'd normally want from a rookie obviously and uh, there was some moments throughout the season where he was really struggling to to catch up up with the speed of what offenses were doing trying to attack him he looked a lot better today he's looked a lot better throughout the training camp this year so far for the Jaguars I'm very encouraged by what I've seen from Devin Lloyd and that's a guy that I was super high on a lot of people in the draft community were very high on Devin Lloyd entering the 2022 NFL draft Uh, struggled a little bit at times last year but did show the flashes of being a playmaker you saw him put it all together a little bit today in the limited limited snaps that he did have. Andre Sisco had a pressure on a zone blitz uh, that led to a Devon Hamilton sack. He got the finish. Devon was making a big impact out there today. Very stout, pushing the pocket. Josh Allen, too, was making an impact when he was out there on the edge, being able to push the pocket and be effective um, against the run as well. On the second drive for the Jaguars defense, Roy Robertson Harris, he laid a big hit on, on the quarterback to force an incompletion on third down. You love to see the interior pressure from the Jaguars. You love to see the effective blitzes as well. Uh, Tavon Campbell, a guy who came around last year. The Jaguars like what he brings to the table. They brought him back this offseason. He was this close to two interceptions, almost had a pick six early in this one. A really good performance by him. You'd obviously like to be able to capitalize on one of those opportunities, but just the fact that he was getting his hands on the football and making plays on the ball is encouraging. Gregory Jr. uh, did not play a ton, but he looked great. Uh, Forced a fumble that Daniel Thomas recovered close to the goal line. He also recovered a fumble on special teams. So Gregory Jr. looked really good out there being able to make some plays from the slot for the Jaguars. Yasir Abdullah. The fourth round pick, maybe fifth round pick for the Jaguars. The Jags had a bunch of day three picks this year, so forgive me if I got that wrong. But a really big sack for the Jaguars. Just use his speed to get around the tackle, get around the edge. He was able to flatten enough to get the get get to the quarterback and uh, force a sack on third down. Got another pressure that forced the quarterback out of the pocket, and then that led to a would be interception. Uh, but Christian Braswell had the had the uh, penalty on that play, unfortunately. But uh, he's making a case, I think, if he continues to play that way, um, to be a designated pass rusher for the Jaguars, maybe even to overtake Caleb on Chase on spot um, on the depth chart right now. Caleb on Chase on has not proven a lot throughout his career. You see Yusir Abdul in his very first NFL preseason game able to make a much bigger impact than you've seen from Caleb on Chase on and uh, nothing against Caleb on, but that's just the brass tacks of it. Uh, Deshaun Dixon, he created a sack for Jeremiah Ledbetter with a quick pressure. He was able to win inside against a guard and get in the quarterback's face, get him off his spot. And then Jeremiah Ledbetter and company were able to finish that one off. Um, You saw Shaquille Quarterman's limitations a little bit, I think, in in pass coverage in in this game. Um, He was not able to slow down Jalen Tolbert in in zone defense. Didn't look like he read that play very well and and didn't have the reaction time to be able to make a play on that. And then they kind of attacked him a little bit in the passing game after that. But, you know, Shaquille Quarterman is more of a downhill thumper than a real uh, coverage player at linebacker for the Jaguars. Uh, you saw Antonio Johnson, the rookie out of Texas A&M, who I think should have been a day two pick. Jaguars picked him up on day three. He was laying some licks on folks. Like, he was hitting. Um, not a lot of people were able to get good hits on Deuce Vaughn. Antonio Johnson was able to get one, and it was a hit that uh, probably saved a really long run by Deuce Vaughn, who was really impressive. He got loose. The Deuce was loose, no doubt about it. I told y'all he was going to be tough to tackle, tough to get hands on, and he was for the for the Cowboys in a big way. I mentioned Kristen Braswell had the penalty that negated a interception. He had two total penalties. One was on special teams. To me, he was looking like a candidate for the practice squad, the day three pick. That's what I had written before. 
he was able to get an interception of his own late in the game. An interception that looked like it would be a game ceiling interception until Snoop Connor wasn't able to handle a, a handoff and the Cowboys got the ball back. But great play by Christian Braswell to be able to intercept, intercept that ball late in the game, going to the ground, reading the quarterback's eyes. I thought that was impressive. So uh, you saw a little bit of a flash from Christian Braswell at the end, despite a, a tough start to the game for him. Caleb Johnson, you saw him, the linebacker, with a nice tackle for loss. Ventrell Miller was also able to get in late in the game and came away with a sack on a blitz. Uh, Jordan Smith made a couple nice plays in the backfield, returning from his knee injury, his first game back after the knee injury that he suffered last offseason. So good for Jordan Smith, the edge rusher for the Jaguars. Looking at the special teams, as I mentioned, Greg Jr. was able to recover a fumble. Looked like Ross Matisik, the long snapper, and Tim Jones were in on that one. I think Matisik punched it out. We'll have to go back and look at that one. But uh, Matisic also, of course, sustained the shoulder injury. Um, I think it was on that play. We'll get more clarity on that. You saw Logan Cook look good, obviously on the Josh Peterson um, punt snap that was errant. Logan Cook was Logan Cook was able to go grab it and make something out of nothing there. He was able to land a couple punts inside the 20. He looked really good. Um, Hopefully, you know, Ross Madison can get back and be healthy. He was questionable to return, which I think is an encouraging sign. We'll see how that plays out. But Parker Washington in the return game, he took all the Jaguars' uh, returns, and he looked really good, especially in punt return. He's also got a first down on a crosser. So I think Parker Washington had a solid day for the Jaguars. I think I think they want to see him be their second returner, and there was nothing he did in this game to make you think he couldn't handle that uh, that role for them. In fact, I think he, he was able to make some guys miss as a returner and, and look very solid in that regard. Again, it is preseason. You don't want to get too high or too low off of this one. Uh, the Jag starters, they scored. Uh, the backup scored. The third string scored. But again, the starters, they were doing what they were doing against backups for the Cowboys. So uh, you have to keep that in mind. But it was a damn nice drive by Trevor Lawrence after he threw the interception. And the Jaguars' starting defense looked really stout, really impressive overall. And, of course, you saw depth players making plays throughout the game, a lot of rookies making plays throughout the game. So very encouraging start. We will dive deeper into this one tomorrow. But for now... Enjoy the preseason victory for the Jaguars. 1-0 in the preseason. A really strong performance overall. Great play calling by Doug Peterson in a lot of situations. Loved the aggressiveness, which may have been forced by the Ross Matisic injury a little bit. But you know Doug Peterson wants to be aggressive anyways on the fourth downs, on the two-point conversions. Uh, So good to see that from the Jaguars. They are not changing their spots this year, it doesn't look like, uh, with Doug Peterson being aggressive in some of those situations. Um, Overall, very solid performance. And I think you can definitely go to sleep tonight uh, feeling happy about how your Jacksonville Jaguars looked in preseason week one against the Dallas Cowboys. Again, a 28-23 to victory. We will be back tomorrow to dive deeper into this one, give some takeaways and all that good stuff. But have a good night. Thank you so much for tuning in. Appreciate y'all.